Hi, this is Tanya Becker, and I'm your host for today's episode of Parts View Exchange Talks Boating. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Parts View's YouTube channel. Also, if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of our podcast episodes, subscribe to Parts View Exchange Talks Boating wherever you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Amazon Music. My guest, Kirk Dieter, is a vice president at Trout Unlimited and is the editor-in-chief for Trout, Trout Unlimited's quarterly magazine. He's also an editor-at-large for Field and Stream magazine and just some of the places his stories have appeared over the years in addition to Trout and Field and Stream include Garden and Gun, The Drake, Fly Rod and Reel, Fly Fisherman, Big Sky Journal, and Saltwater Sportsman. He's also written or co-authored numerous books. Just a few include The Little Black Book of Fly Fishing, 201 tip Tips to Make You a Better Angler, The Little Red Book of Fly Fishing, Tideline, Captain's Fly Fishing in the American Coast, and several others. Kirk is a skilled writer and storyteller and a very experienced trout angler. Basically, I've been joined by an outdoor journalism and fishing legend, really. So thanks so much for joining me, Kurt. Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for the kind words. Yeah. Well, there's a million things we could talk about, and I certainly hope that you'll join me for future episodes. We're going to talk a little bit about the state of cold water fisheries. Um, the foremost mission of Trout Unlimited, as I, as I understand it at least, is conservation work to preserve these cold water fisheries. First of all, is this a good characterization of the thrust of Trout's Unli uh, Trout Unlimited's work? Yeah, it is. And thanks again for having me. Uh, you know, just to be able to talk about this with your audience is, is a really important thing. And we're all vested in this. It's um, cold water fisheries when we're really talking about lakes and rivers and source waters, you know, in, in the Midwest, they come from the springs and the East, they come from the springs and the mountains out here where I live in Colorado, it's the high country and the snow melt and so forth. And when you take care of the water at, at its source, its effects are felt well downstream. You know, some of the more famous trout fishing rivers in the country, like the Delaware river in upper, uh, you know, New York, Pennsylvania area, that's the source of drinking water for New York City, too. So we take care of water in general. And sure, some of that's for fun and fishing, but a lot of that's just for the environment and taking care of um, what everyone needs. And that's clean, cold water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in Trout Unlimited, really, I mean, your work is to raise awareness of the risk to some of these waterways and, and you know, helping to, to conserve them, correct? That's right. We we raise awareness. We're a neat organization. I, I joined the or, TU, well, I joined as a member many, many years ago and uh, uh, proud to do that. My dad was a member, my my in-laws are members and grandparents, you know, it's part of the family. We, we have a fishing tradition. We love to fish. And part of that was taking care of the resources as you go. So I was a member for a long time. And then I covered Trout Unlimited and their work. I did stories on Alaska and other parts of the country, the Southwest and for Field and Stream magazine. And then they had me join on the on the crew here uh, full time. And uh, it's been an honor because it's kind of a, a homecoming for me. I'm, I'm back to something that I, I wake up every morning and I really believe in what I'm doing. And I believe in the work that we do as an organization. And I'm proud of the organization because we not only advocate, you know, we raise awareness. Absolutely. That's an important part of the work that we do. But we we also fix rivers. We get in there and we turn the rocks over and we plant the trees on the side and we make shade and we make structure and we help clean things up when there's a problem and we protect them so that the problems don't pop up in the future. So it's really a, a com complete spectrum of, of taking care of cold water that uh, Trout Unlimited is engaged with right now. Yeah. I mean, some of the reasons are obvious, I think, but you know, why are our um, cold water fisheries so challenged? Well, you know, we do have that issue of climate change, and that's something that... Uh, <laughs> that little pesky issue. <laughs> a little pesky issue. We need to talk about that. But, you know, we see warming temperatures, and that's, uh, you know, that's not good for fish sometimes. Uh, trout like the, the water to be less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And we've seen in the West, for example, last summer, uh, a number of rivers were closed or restricted the hours so that you could only fish in the evening when it was cool or early mornings because those daytime temperatures popped up there into the 70s. And so 
we have to watch that. We have to watch um, runoff. We have to watch um, the events that are triggered by climate change, like floods and fires. In where I live in Colorado, we've had massive wildfires, and that the effects of those have felt for many, many years after as the ash washes into the river, covers the river bottom. The insects are then suffocated, and then the insects are what the fish eat. So it's a, it's a chain reaction. All those things we have to tune into. Um, floods are an issue, um, but but uh, you know there are things. The good news is is that they're by and large fixable, and even on the climate change scale, we can do things to that mitigate the effects of climate change. And so we're making differences that are are seen, and we've seen a lot of rivers in this country that are better now than they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. And I have great optimism that if we talk 20, 30, 40 years into the future, we're going to have healthy rivers still if we are diligent and do our, our best. That's great because much of the news you hear isn't so optimistic. So I, it's, it's always good to hear a little bit of, of yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I think that people often don't think about just things like ash in the river from wildfires changes the acidity of the water and, and things of, of that nature. I mean, I think a lot of people don't really, we kind of live in a, in a, in a society that does, doesn't really understand anymore that everything is interconnected. Um, yeah, and so you, I, you, you know, just so hit, I, you, know. you hit the magic word there too. Connectivity is another thing that we really focus on. A lot of fish, like salmon, for example, go to the ocean and then they move back up the rivers to spawn and create new generations of salmon and so forth. And that's the same in the Great Lakes where they've introduced salmon and so forth. But if those fish can't get up and over past dams, for example, we break that chain. We break that cycle. And that's another thing that we have to be focused on. Um, if we can connect things, even simple things like fixing culverts in where, where you know, they get smashed or, or, or they've gotten filled in with rock and sediment and so forth and fish can't get through. Well, that's how little fish get made. So we want to make sure we make as many little <laughs> fish as we can. And, 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 and by creating the habitat that allows the little fish to happen, um, we also improve the overall health of the river. And that's, that's a, that's a benefit for everybody, whether they fish or not. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I live in, um, I live in Chicago actually, and, uh, spend a decent amount of time in the, uh, sub you know, North suburbs of Chicago. And they are, uh, constantly developing new retail development. Um, sometimes housing too, but you know, a lot of new retail development and just will bulldoze forest without really thinking too much about it. And then everybody is really shocked when they have foxes, coyotes and so forth in their front yards. And, you know, I, I don't understand. <laughs> It's just, it, it's just amazing. I think that people literally don't understand whether it's waterways or land that things are interconnected and, and uh, you disrupt things, there's going to be consequences. That's right. And sometimes it's hard to put all the pickup sticks back together once they're scattered all over the place, right? So uh, <laughs> sometimes right. being diligent right. in preventing that stuff from happening is, is the best play. And glad to hear if you're from Chicago. I'm from Milwaukee originally, so right up the way on, mm -hmm. the, on the lake and... Uh, I, I, I hold those places, you know, like I was saying to my friends the other day, you could blindfold me, take me up in the space and beam me down and the shore of Lake Michigan. And I'd know exactly where I was because I can feel it, you know, and I can smell it and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it makes it. And so waters are sacred. Waters are important. And I think a lot of people feel that way, especially those of us who have been lucky enough to grow up on or around some of our notable waterways. Yeah. I definitely do. I, I'm a Lake Michigan, Great Lakes girl and, and, uh, value them <laughs> highly. So, yeah. So, you know, how does Tr Trout Unlimited go about? I, I know, I know you do a lot of advocacy work and this kind of thing. Like, how do you go about managing some of the conflicting interests of landowners, government agencies, nonprofits, all municipalities, all these stakeholders? I mean, how do you kind of handle some of that? Well, you, you raise a good point. It's a balancing act, right? It's it, You have to look for win-wins. The good news is that fishing, you know, if that's, if that's where it starts, if that's where the conversation starts, fishing isn't a political issue. Fishing is a cultural no. 
It's a cultural issue, you know? People from all sides of the spectrum love fishing and had, their families are part of the fishing community. It's a community. It's, so it's easy to find common ground. And it's easy to say, well, it's not always easy. I may be overstating things a little bit, but it's, <laughs> there's an opportunity to find common ground and it exists. So no matter where someone's coming from, they have a private landowner. Well, you know, maybe I can't go on their private land and I, they don't want me there. But what happens on their private land if that river flows through it and goes down and we're talking about the health of the waterway and the fish and so forth? I do have a vested interest in how that person manages their property and how that water is affected and so forth. So, and vice versa. You know, we, we as a country have more public lands and public waters than anywhere. I'm lucky because I got to travel all over the world and write about fishing. You know, it's a tough job. Somebody yeah. had to do it, right? So, <laughs> but, but no matter, no matter where I've gone, ever to, it's unanimous. Ever, the United States is the envy of the world for our public resources that we share. And um, those are things that we all have a vested interest in protecting one way or the other. And because it is a public interest, again, to your point, we're able to find common ground and we're able to work in a nonpartisan way, um, not just bipartisan, nonpartisan way to find yeah. some solutions and get things done. Yeah. Yeah. No, these things, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, um, I mean, sometimes there's certainly, I mean, there's certainly valid debates, debates amongst well-intended people on the best ways to handle these things. I mean, there's, you know, there's not always a clear right answer. And sometimes there's multiple right answers or good answers. Right. Uh, but you're right. It's, it's not, it's not a political, it's not a partisan issue. It's just a, it, you know, it's a discussion amongst well-intended people, I believe. So, um, what, um, you know, we talked a little bit about global, uh, global warming just a, a couple minutes ago. I mean, what, you know, I mean, global warming is, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot's being done to, to reverse, you know, the, the damage, you know, mitigate the risks of it, but it's got, it's going to continue odds are, um, you know, what challenges, you know, lie ahead for the cold water fisheries? I mean, you know, what are, what are folks well, doing looking out into the future a bit? You know, the cold water fisheries are really kind of the canaries in the coal mine and that we see the effects of climate change. As an angler who's been fishing my whole life, I've seen rivers change. I've seen changes in the the animals that are around the river, you know, the bugs that hatch in the rivers come at different times of the year now. The levels of the rivers are different sometimes. We've seen, you know, the ash from fires and the effects of floods and the logs moved around and all that. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's right there in front of you. When you, when you, when you're in waders and you're out there fishing, uh, you look around and you can see this, right? So it's actually, again, I'm, I'm, you can probably tell I'm an optimist by nature, but. What it does is it tells it tells people, okay, this here it is. Like, let's not argue about this anymore. Let's get get about the business of fixing it, and let's get about doing what we can. And you know, there are some changes that people are able to make in their lives, and some that they're not, and that's fine. But there are some things we can do to mitigate the effects. And planting trees, I can't count how many trees to you and our partners have planted over the years, but just planting the trees makes a huge difference, not only in terms of the air, but also the shade and shade creates coolness and, and so forth. So there are things that can be done. Um, and then, you know, managing how we approach certain things and, 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 and working to cooperate with each other. Um, you know, I think that, I think there is a blueprint for success if we're, if we're diligent, diligent about these things. The thing that I love is I think that fishing is a part of me has been pretty active in, in um, coastal marine conservation efforts, you know, supporting some of those efforts. And um, the, the thing that's exciting to me is I, I think fishing is a great equalizer. You know, you, you have a discussion about global warming outside of the context of fishing or outdoor sports that people like. You know, it tends to, the discussion tends to kind of go off the rails a bit, but every <laughs> angler, <laughs> you have the discussion in the context of fishing or sport 
or whatever. I mean, every angler that's experienced and has been out there knows, can see what's happening. You know, may not see the mi micro view or understand detailed science, but they, it's real, right? I mean, they can see it. So fishing is sort of like the, um, it's an ambassador, really, of, of goodwill love, and, and positive change. <laughs> I love that. And I love what you said, equalizer. You know, you know, one of the things mm -hmm. um, I've always said, I, I used to be a guide and would take people, and I still take people fishing for fun now, but uh, you could have the most high powered CEO, you know, brilliant doctor type or whatever. And they get in the, a boat with you and they realize, you know, they're used to being the smartest person in the room and they might not be the smartest person in the boat. You know, they might be the, yeah. they, they, used to, <laughs> and, and they might be the second or third smartest person in the boat when it comes to the fishing. So, and they love that. There's always something to learn from nature, from other people that you're with and so on and so forth. So it is, it's a community and it's, it's, it's refreshing for a lot of people to be able to start the learning process and build along as they go and, and it, it makes people feel young again. And that's, that's one yeah. of the beauties of fishing too. And that's why, yeah. that, you know, to put a bow on some of this, that's why those things, you know, fishing is a lot more than pulling on fish. Fishing yeah. is, is, you know, community, it's family, it's fun. It makes people young. It makes people, helps people's mental health. It helps people's physical health to be outside. That's such a wonderful thing that we have to be, diligent and protect the resources that make it possible in the first place. Right. And if we don't do that, then we're just shooting ourselves in our feet. So that's right. And that's my two cents. That's and that's right. why, that's what I was trying to get at earlier where that's why coming to try to unlimited has been a homecoming and waking up and feeling purpose every day is an important part of what we do. And, and that's a good, good thing. And by the way, thank you also in parts of you for all the support that you've done. And and coastal stuff, it's all connected. You know, it starts in the in the mountains and the rivers flow to the coast and we're, we're all connected. And um, I love saltwater fishing too. I'm rambling, but I love saltwater fishing. So I just had to say that. No, no absolutely. I uh, I love it too. I don't have as much experience saltwater fishing as I do freshwater, but uh, it's, um, it, it's super, it's really fun as well. We actually um, we have a relationship with a, a bass angler, professional bass angler, a guy named uh, Garrett Paquette, um, and we're <laughs> he's down in Florida in a couple weeks and for a tournament, and we're he, his experience is, is virtually all freshwater, you know, bass fishing, um, and we're actually going to do like a battle of the of the angler kind of thing, like pit, you know, have him fish with a, a very experienced saltwater angler, and <laughs> then we're hoping to ship the saltwater angler up to Michigan and. And have them, you know, have him kind of out of his con out of his context. So it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds awesome. I wish. I, yeah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> Keep me posted on how that goes. I want to see what happens. It, it be, uh, but you learn something every time you go, and, and again, it's all connected. But like that's why I like saltwater fishing because of what I was saying earlier. It puts me on a peg where I've got to start learning and figuring things out. It's a brave new world for me. Bass fishing too. Yeah, yeah. Um, love that. Yeah. I love all sorts of fishing. So. Oh, that's yeah. the neat thing. No, it's super fun. So, you know, for anglers passionate about preserving our fisheries, I mean, first of all, they should be joining Trout Unlimited for sure. And, so, you know, and, and supporting your efforts are really important. Everything Trout Unlimited is doing. What else can people do? Well, I appreciate that for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, the, you know, they can volunteer. You know, you don't have to necessarily join even. Um you can show up at a river cleanup and help help out. You know, the, the beauty of Trout Unlimited also is that we have so many volunteers, over 300,000 members and supporters throughout the country. And collectively, they put in almost 800,000 volunteer hours every year, cleaning rivers, turning rocks, that kind of stuff. The labor value of 800,000 hours of work is immense. It's millions and millions of dollars in value. And so right. the more people are, can engage or, you know, read our stories, come online and read what we have to say on tu.org, that's contributing. It's, it's helping the, the, the community. Um, go, to, go to help with a river cleanup or tune in or, or whatever. Th those types of things, people can 
you know, many hands make light work, right? That's the old saying. And <laughs> the more hands, the better off and more effective we are as an organization and more effective we are as a fishing community, um, whether you're a member yeah. of TU or not. That's great. That's some really great um, advice. And, and uh, certainly helping with those river cleanups is, is something everyone can do. And yeah, you know what? You feel <laughs> really good when you're done with those. You know, I've had more yeah. fun on days where we where what I was catching was trash bags full of stuff, you know, plastic. <laughs> but you know, the conversation the <laughs> yeah, the conversations and the impact and you go home at the end of the day and you say, Well, I made a difference today. And that was a really that's a neat thing that everyone is invited to take part in. That's great. That is great. I'll th I'll put my name in the in the hat for that. I'll figure out a, a, a time where I can join you guys. So, yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Kurt. I, I encourage all of our listeners to follow Kurt and Trout Unlimited on their social channels, and I've included those links in the show notes. Um, I enc also encourage our listeners to visit Trout Unlimited at tu.org, as, as Kurt said, and check out their work and consider becoming a member. Um, finally, I've included an Amazon link that'll allow you to, to easily find out Kurt's books. So they're, they are, look very interesting. So thanks again for being here, Kurt. And it was really great talking with you. Well, thanks again for having me and, and for all of the work that you're doing. And I look forward to coming back sometime if you'll have me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Parts View Exchange Talks Boating Podcast. Are you in a dock war with your boating neighbor for the cleanest boat? Check out our marine soaps, polishes, waxes, and more at partsview.com. And for free shipping, use the coupon code PVTALKSSHINE, a special perk for our podcast listeners. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for boating knowledge, to keep in touch with the PartsView community, and for special sales and promotions. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And check out the show notes for the coupon code just mentioned, more information about Parts View and the products we offer, as well as our boating blog, the Parts View Exchange. And a big thanks to Mind for performing the original music featured within this podcast.